Nadine, in trying to understand consciousness, free will is one component of it. Uh, and there's a big challenge to free will from my old colleagues in the brain science community, the neuroscientists. And it, it has many directions. It, it, it attacks it from a philosophical point of view, from some claims in neurophysiology and brain stuff, and, and even from a legal point of view. So how do you look at the whole issue of, uh, of what's happening in the rapid development of neuroscience and the concept of free will? I actually think I'm rather deflationary because I can't think of any experiment that I've seen that makes me disbelieve in free will. Uh, I think every single experiment that's claimed to do that um, just has significant flaws in terms of what it actually shows us. It doesn't show us anything about free will. It might show us that our brains are active when we are conscious but, but and what acting. would you expect but what would you expect <laughs> exactly and i think the libid experiment is exactly that what would you expect except to see brain activity preceding our awareness of our actions because awareness requires brain activity um, there are functional mri experiments that purport to show that we can predict people's behavior uh, 10 seconds in advance but all they do is give you a, a slight statistical increase over chance. So instead of being purely a chance predicting people's behavior uh, on a forced choice, you can p predict 55 or 56 percent. Now that sounds uh, sig significant because... It is significant in the sense that... It tells you something. It tells you something and what it tells you is there's something about your brain. So there's information in your brain that has relevance to your future decisions. But again, what would you expect? If you take me to dinner and you ask me would I take the chocolate mousse or the creme brulee, I know even now what I would do, right? There's, there it's are like preferences. <laughs> well, okay, if that's one of the options. There, I have preferences. Those are presumably encoded in my brain. I also have memory of what I did last if mm -hmm. I'm doing some repetitive task. I might be thinking, boy, I pressed right three times in a row. Maybe yeah. it's time to press left. All kinds of things are going to have some kind of, of trace in my brain and they also have some bearing on what I do in the future. So, so I don't think that experiment tells us we don't have free will. It tells us there's information in our brain that is relevant to our future action, and I would expect nothing less. Well, free will is a general concept, but we see today the, uh, the uh, prefix neuro being applied to a lot of different disciplines. Uh, yeah. Neuroethics, uh, neuroeconomics, uh, uh, neurotheology. So we see neuro being applied to a lot of things, and, and in many of them there is this sort of predictive sense that, yeah. that what you think is existing in reality is not because it's, it's sort of a pre-programmed thing in your brain. How do you react to all of that? Yeah, I, I reject the last part. So I don't think that, that the fact that there's some physical aspect and maybe even a temporal aspect to our choices or our behaviors, et cetera, None of that shows that, that those aren't real choices or real behaviors. Um, so the, I think it's just clear that we are physical systems and we're causal systems. And nothing about those particular facts, I think, should make us doubt that we have free will or that we have mental states or that we really act or we really choose. Um, so I, I think that there's actually a, a problem in, in that the neuroscientists don't really understand the philosophy and they jump to philosophical conclusions, but, but they really, those conclusions that, that their little bit of data shows that we lack this general capacity uh, just isn't warranted. Could it be that the reason that you think that free will survives is that you have deflated the concept of free wills? And have and feel very philosophically good about it. So <laughs> yes. it's not like you I'm you feel sanctimoniously <laughs> yeah, deflationary. Yeah. So you, I mean, it's not like you've done something evil. You feel good because you've analyzed it philosophically. It's compatible with this and that and the other thing. Uh, and therefore, yeah. what your concept of free will is is actually not that uh, uh, different from what the neuroscientists say is can't happen because you've deflated for free will to what they're saying is not free will. So it's the same thing. That's, I think, a fair question to ask. 
Um, I actually think that I have a little bit more to stand on than that, because I think that if you really probe that concept, that folk co concept that many people have, it's an incoherent concept that is, it's inconsistent, and there is nothing that could be exactly that. Mm. And so what I like to think about uh, myself working on is trying to take that concept and finding something that is pretty close, but possible. That I think we have. So what you're trying to do is not deflate free will, but inflate free will to as, as big as it can be, but still be real. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Those people who think that you need souls will not be happy with what I've done. And those people who think you need uncaused causes also won't be happy with what I've done. But I don't think either of those are realistic things to pin free will on. And uh, actually, Bertram Malley has, has just presented some really interesting work showing that people's concept of free will doesn't seem to be hinged on souls or uncaused causes. Uh, so if he's right, then I'm not really doing violence to what people really think free will is in some... You know, if you probe it empirically, it's just this intuitive See, I, nasal... I don't, I don't think that matters. I don't think that matters at all. Which? What people think. We want to know that we're talking about the same thing. We do want to know we're talking about the same thing, but I would like people who understand what it means to, to define it, not what common people think, because... Uh, what, what is, I mean, that's an interesting question on its own, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think it should impinge on this discussion. Well, what we want to do is try to at least create continuity between the historical tradition of discussing free will and what the guy on the street thinks that he has or, or is lacking or worries about when we tell him he that his brain <laughs> works that way. So I think it's important to, to draw those uh, connections, true. but uh, ultimately I think that it's worth pointing out if there's an incoherent concept and at least laying out what the possibilities are for coherent concepts in the same vicinity.